fighting to gain acceptance into Division I, they're on the right track. Stay with us. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Welcome back to Monmouth College for college soccer. Right here on TV 34, it's the Monmouth College Hawks taking on the Knights of Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm Bob Lampinen. With me is Bob Hogan. And, Bobby, we certainly have a near-perfect day for soccer this afternoon at a beautiful soccer field. Well, Monmouth College has a great facility here, Bobby. We have a good crowd, a, a little bit of wind. I don't think it's going to be much of a factor. It is blowing downfield a little bit from left to right. Okay, well, let's take a look at the starters. For, first for Monmouth College in the... Goal will be Mark Zabilowitz, the backs Dave Pellin, Halleck, Turi, and Olat. In the midfield, Hamadike, Sacco, and McDonald. And up front, Robbie Fogler, Rusty Aronson, and freshman Mark Wilson, who's really had a tremendous first year. Starting for Fairleigh Dickinson in the nets, it'll be Higgins in the defensive backfield. Colthart, Daly, King, and Gill in the midfield. Duffy, Mataniak, and Einskoff. Up front, Young, Arias, and Gray. And that's a pretty potent front line, Bobby. Those guys can score. Yeah, they've done uh, a lot of scoring all year long, Bobby. We mentioned that they're uh, very explosive. They like to play a nice controlled game, and uh, anytime near the net, they're not af af afraid to fire away. Okay, and our officials for the game, the linesman, uh, Jack Wazowski, in the middle will be Alan Brown, and Jack Schrumpf will be the other linesman. Uh, evidently, Jack Schrumpf has not arrived yet. It looks like there's a substitute out on the field. As you look at head coach Joe Donahue of Monmouth College, his team is 7-4, and four, and really... Uh, He's put together a good program. It hasn't taken him very long. He certainly has. Joe's only been here. This is his third year, I believe. And uh, they started out real young, and he dedicated himself to playing only the shore area player. And he stayed with that philosophy, and they've just gotten better and better as they've gone along. They've become very competitive. Well, that's a good point. And on the other side of the line is Ben Stravato, the head coach for Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, ben Stravato does not necessarily recruit from the shore. He's had players from all over the world and some of the past years at FDU and they are definitely a national power. They put together a great team every year. And they certainly are and I know Joe and Ben are good friends. I've seen them together a number of times but their philosophies do differ as you say. Joe has dedicated himself to recruiting from the shore area. He knows that the caliber of play here is very good and as you can see the records, uh, Monmouth is 7-4 and four and FDU 5-3-2. and two. We did mention, of course, that FDU has lost three very big games to nationally ranked powers in Penn State, Rutgers, uh, and Long Island University. Well, Bobby, you mentioned the uh, local talent for Monmouth College. Just running down their roster quickly from Belmar, Zabilowitz, Freehold, Pellin, from Br uh, Brick Township, Robbie Fogler, from Spring Lake, Halleck, from Beechwood, bound by Tom's River as Hammondike, from Ocean Township, Len Turi, Nikki Sacco from Tinton Falls, Todd Tafel from Wall, uh, from Ocean Township, Brad Bleefeld uh, from the Raritan area, Hazlitt, John Russo, Freehold, Brian Mallon. So uh, they've certainly loaded up on shore area talent. I know John or Joe Donahue is certainly happy about that. The two teams have taken the field. FDU will be wearing their uh, maroon shirts with the uh, sky blue on the sleeves, Mammoth in the home whites, and we're just about underway. They play two 45-minute halves. As you look at Mark Zabilowitz, the goalkeeper for Mammoth College, Mark out of St. Rose High School, and Mr. Higgins, that's Terry Higgins down at the other end for Fairleigh Dickinson University. Fairleigh Dickinson uh, in the past couple of games has sometimes alternated their goalkeepers. Uh, Terry Higgins has been the starter, but uh, Martin Vulovich has had plenty of time in the nets along with uh, Andrew Gretz, so we could see one of three keepers in the nets by the time this one's over. We're underway, Monmouth, as we mentioned, in the white. And let's see, Bobby, if we see any contrasting styles of play here. We'll see what FDU likes to do. Right away, you can see they like to put pressure on. It came right down the wing. Good pressure. And the ball knocked out of bounds, but it was brought down the left wing by number three, Brian Einskopf. And he really was almost completely unmolested down the left side. Cut it back, and Mike King, an All-American with 82 career goals at Fairleigh Dickinson University, almost made it one nothing. 10 seconds into the match. That's, that's certainly a player that Mama's going to have to concentrate on today, Bobby. He's going to have to be tightly marked throughout the entire game. As far as contrasting styles, I don't think you're going to see that. Both uh, coaches believe in, in 11 players attacking and 11 players defending and a, a slow buildup, and they both like to use the width of the field. I think we'll see a lot of wing play today. That was settled down by Nick Sacco in the middle, and Aronson comes away with it, plays it out to the right wing. Fogler plays it. This is number 18, Mark Wilson. And now it's Mama's turn to put a little heat on. 
But you can see uh, heads up play by FDU. They withdraw their wingers, bring them all the way back. That was number one coming back, Mike King. Good way to initiate your attack, bring your forwards all the way back into that defensive third. It certainly is, Bobby. And we mentioned that they like to defend with all 11 players. Uh, you're not going to see too many forwards hanging up around midfield waiting for the ball. They'll, they'll like to gain possession of it in their defense and work it up. No score. The match just underway from the beautiful campus here at Monmouth College. And unfortunately, we are not afforded the luxury of a press box, which would give our cameras a little bit of a higher angle. So we are a little bit lower today. Customary camera angle not with us, but I don't think that's going to detract from the talent that's out there this afternoon. And played back by number 11, Chris Coulthard, all the way back to his goalkeeper, Terry Higgins. And here you can see the philosophy. They don't want to just punt the ball out. They initiate it with their backs, but a possible mistake. This is Fogler. Fogler knifes through, but Higgins off the line, fumbles it, finally recovers. Bobby, even though Mammoth has been in the attack here in the early going, I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Donahue go with a little bit of a defensive philosophy in the early going here. Uh, let his players know that they can play with a team of this caliber, and uh, as they get further on in the match, start attacking a little bit more. And Fogler has it knocked out of play. That was Declan Daly. Knocked it into touch, so it's a throw-in for the Hawks. Of course, we covered Mammoth's game against Rutgers, a 3-1 to one defeat. And you know what? Mammoth certainly has proven to themselves that they can play with these powers, and uh, eventually we're going to have to stop talking potential. They're putting it together. They're 7-4, and four, and uh, they're for real. The, the top teams recognize that. Yeah, they, cer they certainly are. As we mentioned, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, they're still a young team. Uh, they're, still, they're only going to get better. Uh, they're playing together for their second or third years, and uh, they have been giving some of these better teams some nightmares. Well, Mark Wilson just earned a corner for his team, and being teed up there by number nine, Nick Sacco. Sacco out of Monmouth Regional High School. And he drops it right, right up in the middle. There's a whistle, though, and that goal will not count. There was a push inside the 18-yard area, and it'll be a free kick for the FDU Knights. Very dangerous corner taken there by Mammoth, and a good job by goalkeeper Terry Higgins off his line. Uh, almost kept possession of it. He was roughed up a little bit, and the penalty was called. And the foot race is on down the right side. This battle won by Mammoth. They come away with it. A little one touch, almost dangerous, but Mammoth keeps possession momentarily taken away. This is number three, Brian Einskopf. Knock it across. And they call a push against Mammoth College. It'll be a direct free kick right at the 18-yard line. Tough call there. That was really a tough call, and it's a dangerous situation. Uh, the Mammoth defender did a good job. He was, he was tightly marking his man, stepped in and made the tackle. It was a little bit of contact. And these, these situations here are surely dangerous. Just off the 18-yard line, it's a five-man wall set up by Monmouth. Let's see what the Knights do. They touch it, and they drive it. Nice job by the wall, held their position, blocked the shot. And they did a real nice job on that, Bobby. As the ball was touched, they had one player in what we call a suicide position. He just charges the ball and tries to throw his body at it and the wall stays where it was. If the wall had broke up at all there, that shot's on net. Well, so often you see that. Uh, the referee blows the whistle and all the guys on the wall, they take off and they're, there it's almost impossible for your goalkeeper to see the ball. Terry Higgins, and he punts that one well past midfield over to Gray on the right side. And number 15, Patrick Gray could not control that one, so it'll be a throw-in for the Hawks. We're about five minutes into this one. No score between Monmouth and Fairleigh Dickinson University. Dangerous play, the call against FDU, so it will be an indirect free kick. This one looks to be from about the 28 or 30-yard mark. Let's see if they chip it in. Wind could be a factor on this. It is blowing towards the FDU net. Here's they're going to try and flight one to the far post. Mama 
with runs there, attackers inside. They go near post. That will not count. It was indirect. I don't think it was touched. It was an indirect kick. That one should not count. It didn't look like it was touched, did it? No, it, it wasn't. Almost a critical mistake by goalkeeper Terry Higgins. He came out of the net. He went up. If he had touched it and it had gone into the net, it would count it. But it was an indirect kick, and therefore nobody touched it. It's going to be a goal kick for FDU. Well, we'll take a look at it on the replay. As you can see, it's flighted over the keeper's head. He did make an attempt to play the ball. Fortunately for him, he didn't touch it. Otherwise, it would have counted. Well, the fans loved it, and some of the players jumped up and down. But Joe Donahue just sat calmly on the bench. He knew that they w he would not get that one. That's pretty good, though. We, we finally got one right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough call for an official, too, because you're, you're trying to look off the ball a little bit for contact. Sometimes it just skims off of a head, and it's all it has to happen is just has to be touched and, and that one the keeper just missed it a blessing for FDU a uh, good job by the uh, referee there too Bobby he looked over to his linesman and the linesman just simply shook his head letting him know that nobody touched it and it's a goal kick okay we have a foul on the far side against the Hawks of Monmouth College so they'll get a free kick that's FDU will get the free kick and they play the ball down low they're looking for Mike King and King controls it, finally has it knocked over the end line, so it'll be a corner kick for the Knights. And here it is. And they played it out to about the 18-yard line. Paul Duffy tried to volley it first time and shanked it off the outside of his right foot, a harmless goal kick coming up for Mammoth. Good to see all 11 players from Mammoth back defending inside their 18, Bobby. A lot, of, a lot of high school teams you'll see keep two or three players up in an attempt at a, at a quick counterattack, but the, the first thing you want to do in a situation like that is make sure that the ball is cleared. A little contact for Mike King, who went down inside the box, but no call. Goal kick for Mammoth. They play it across the penalty area to number four, Paul Halleck. And Halleck smartly gives it back to Zabilowitz. And that one shanked out of bounds by number eight, Declan Daly. And uh, you don't see that happen too often on an FDU team. Their skill level is usually a little bit higher than that. Uh, I was really surprised at that. I expected to see him uh, put it down on the ground, get control of it, and start working it upfield. They've uh, tried to play quite a few long balls here. This is Len Turry. Turry plays it out wide. Wilson comes back, but he can't handle it. Mistraps it into touch, throw in for FDU. They'll take their time. Number eight will take the throw in, Declan Daly. That's a great soccer name. <laughs> this is Daly. Here's where your small-sided games in practice come in handy. Fight for control. That time it didn't pay off. Yeah, they kind of forced the issue there. They had two, three, four touches on the left side, and they didn't look to go towards the middle or to the uh, opposite side of the field, and they wound up losing the ball. Pellin hustles after it. This is Sacco. Taken away. Mammoth pushing their defenders up into the attacking half. Fogler with a little bump into the back of number eight, Declan Daly. That's a foul. You can't do that. FDU will get the free kick. Bobby, this is my real first good chance to see Mammoth College play this year. And I got to tell you, I'm very impressed. They're certainly not afraid to attack, and uh, they're bringing all kinds of players through. Their defenders have been into the attack, and they certainly are playing with a lot of confidence. Here's a nice little one touch by number one, Mike King. Still on, number 18 chases it down. The Kanyak. And they play it back out, Fogler. And that's going to be an offside. Looks like it's number 18 offside, Peter Nikanyak. I'd like to thank uh, Mike Elko, the former sports information director here at Monmouth. He's now at FDU for giving us a phonetic uh, 
uh, spelling of some of these names because without it, we could have had some problems. N-A-T-K-A-N-I-E-C. He tells me it's pronounced Nakanyak. It certainly is going to create a lot of problems for us. As we said, FDU has a lot of foreign players on their team. Free kick from Ahmed. And just headed out. It was... Uh, Open left winger streaking in there, but they couldn't get the ball to him. And now it's a counterattack for FDU as they go down the right side. We mentioned the number of foreign players on the team, Bobby. We, we see, uh, looking at our roster, we see a number of players from uh, England, Ireland. We have one from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And then I see the old one from Queens, New York. It's good to see that every once in a while. <laughs> Are you implying that the Queens, New York, is a, is a foreign-born player? <laughs> we have one, one player from New Jersey on, on Fairleigh Dickinson, one player from Teaneck, and that's it. And another foul. This time it's an elbow foul called against Monmouth. So once again, FDU in good scoring position. It'll be a restart from about the 23-yard mark, just off the, to the right side, even with the outside post. The Hawks again with a five-man wall. See what FDU will do here. This is a direct free kick. It does not have to be touched by two, but they play it through the legs of Gray. Again, the wall blocks it. Mike King tried to cut it across. And that'll be dangerous play. A tremendously skilled play, a bicycle kick, but that's dangerous. And we're trying to check out who that player was. Looks like it was number 12. It was number 12, Jemai. Arias, who went up in the air, and some great skill on that one. <laughs> Has a great show of skill. Also, a great job of defending by Mammoth. Uh, the shot, original shot taken into the wall, a rebound blocked by the Mammoth defense. And there's Jamey right there. Tremendous bicycle kick inside the 18, but it was a dangerous play violation. Patrick Gray applying pressure. And here comes number 12, Mike Lamatina. And they square it across. Hamadike plays it wide to Halleck. Fogler retreats. Good ball control. Nice build up. Not too much happening. Just keeping possession. A little one touch. Watch out here, King inside. And let's see, I think they may have had an offside there. I, I don't think so, Bobby. I think the mom at the fence was screaming for an offside call. It looked like they tried an offside trap and got caught with it. Uh, I believe number one for Fairleigh Dickinson, Michael King, did a good job of keeping himself onside and went through and just missed wide to the left. Good pressure by Monmouth, but FDU keeping control. The linesman on the far side continually raising his flag. Again, he raises it, and the referee waves him off again. And he looked offside from here that time. Uh, the first time, I don't know, the ball was touched back and he waved it off. But the second time when the ball was played through to a very dangerous Michael King, he was obviously a good three or four yards off, and the referee waved it off again. And they play it back to Terry Higgins. This is number 14, Peter Gill. He's a sweeper. He's going to try to put some pressure on. Crosses midfield. Nice dummy. Stepped over by King. And tackled away. But nice play by Mike King. He stepped over it, and the Kanyak carried through, but it was just knocked away. Yes, an ex excellent job by sweeper back number eight, Len Torrey from Monmouth College. Uh, King was through again, and as a last desperation act, a good sliding tackle to play the ball out of bounds. And that one blocked away. Nick Sacco stayed right with it to knock the attempted cross away. Einskopf. And FDU starting to get their offense organized. Mama's going to have to pick up the pressure defensively. Good marking by Pellin.
and they try to chip that one in, but too long misplayed by number five, Gary Young. Look up, look up. This is Sacco. Bad ball. See the quickness of Mike King. King again. And three Mammoth defenders surround Mike King and manage to block that cross away. But if he gets those crosses through, they're going to be dangerous. Yeah, they're nice and low and hard. And Michael King has really shown a lot here. He's a good player from Middlesex, England. Mammoth's really going to have to concentrate on him. Sacco fans on it. And this taken by number seven, Paul Duffy. Didn't take that one well. A lot of uh, Fairleigh Dickinson's uni universities, uh, a lot of their attacks here have resulted uh, by misplayed balls by Mammoth defenders. Uh, their, their touches seem to be just a little bit off. Their ideas are good. They got to make sure they get the touches to their, to their teammates and not to Fairleigh players. Zabilowicz takes the goal kick. Still no score. <laughs> We are in the first half. Good pressure by Wilson, but knocked back to the goalkeeper by Peter Gill. Terry Higgins, the keeper with a quick release. In good individual battle over there by number six, uh, Paul Hammerdike and number three. Brian Einskopf, they've really been uh, banging heads so far here in the first half. This is the Hawks on the attack. Fogler, dangerous player, nice ball up the right wing. Nick Sacco, nice move by Sacco. And cleared away, but Sacco with a beautiful move. Fogler tries to chip to the corner flag. And again, it's cleared out. Now here comes FDU on the attack. So both defenses really spread out. Nice ball to Gray. Gray inside the box. Looks to cut it back. There's King. And they're going to call a trip. That's going to be a penalty kick. Mike King taken down inside the 18. And this will be a penalty kick for Fairleigh Dickinson University. Oh, I hate to see that. <laughs> Being a defender, Bobby, there was a little bit of contact there. He might have been tripped, but certainly, certainly both players going for the ball. And I don't know. I think the player from Fairleigh Dickinson took a little bit of a dive. I'll give him a 9-9 nine, nine on that one because he got the call. Yeah, degree of difficulty. It's not easy to make it look good inside, and he did it. Joe Donahue, the head coach for Monmouth. Is that a beard Joe's trying to grow? or? Uh... <laughs> Joe, Joe doesn't usually say anything to officials at all, and you can tell he's not happy with that call. You have a great game going on here, nothing, nothing. And, it's soon to become one nothing because of a call by the official. I don't, I don't like that. Declan Daly will take it. Penalty kick. Daly against Zabilowicz. And there it is, one to nothing. FDU breaks out on top by virtue of the penalty kick by Declan Daly. We uh, do not have the good fortune of an operating clock here. So we're not sure of the time of that first goal. Let's take a look at the penalty again. Well, you can tell, Bobby, the players of this caliber, when they get to this level, they're not going to miss penalty shots. Uh, they're expected to make 99 out of 100, and he made no mistake with that at all. So Monmouth will kick it off. They trail at one to nothing. Tough break for the Hawks. They had really played well on that last goal. It was uh, the outside right, Patrick Gray, who made the play down the right side, cut it back, got it to King. King. Had his heels clicked a little bit, took a little bit of a dive, and earned the penalty kick for his team. And now a whistle and a foul called against Fairleigh Dickinson. This one just outside the 18. I guess the coaches are going to have to start teaching a lot of skills, uh, passing, trapping, shooting, diving. <laughs> Here it comes, it's Nicky Sacco. He flights this one. Far post, it's in the back of the net. That time it'll count. Goalkeeper Terry Higgins really mixed up on that one. It actually came off of the post and off of Higgins' chest. We're gonna give the goal though to the guy who took the kick that time, Nicky Sacco, but a beautifully placed free kick. 
Let's take a little bit of a different look at this one. We're going to see a, a great ball by Sacco to the far post. And just again, Terry Higgins just looks awful coming out of, out of the box. Uh, before, he, he got away with it because it was an indirect, but he misplayed that ball also. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Mammoth attack him uh, high on the, on the balls flighted in from now on. I think you'll see anything within 30 yards. They're going to flight him, but this is King goes the other way, and he's taken down. He was taken down. Actually, not a bad foul by Len Torrey. Yeah, he definitely took him down that time. There's no question about it. And we have our first yellow card of the match. Uh, that might be a good card. It was obvious that he was on a breakaway, and he took him down outside the area. Actually, a good foul by the defender. Particularly against Mike King, the All-American with 82 career goals at FDU. He breaks away. It's money in the bank. A little bit of a defensive lapse there by Monmouth also. It's horrible to give up a goal and then let a team come right down on you and you create a breakaway uh, like they did there. Well, once again, the five-man wall. FDU again surrounds the soccer ball with three people. And they try to just drive it through the wall that time. The wall three for three on blocks. And Mark Wilson comes away with it, but finally it's deflected off of Wilson. It'll be a throw in for FDU. Score tied one to one. Declan Daly scoring on a penalty kick. Nick Sacco unassisted on an 18 yard free kick within about 15 seconds of each other. I'm very surprised to see Fairley keep forcing that ball, trying to get it through the wall. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't seen a touch to the outside and then a hit. Yeah, and that time they clear it out. Clear it too long, though. Settled down nicely by Peter Gill, a sweeper. And that will be offsides. Number three, Brian Einskopf didn't like the call, yelling at the referee. Look at that, look at that, pointing to a defender. But the call stands. You know, you talk about that wall. They've blocked three so far. Eventually, I think you get gun shy because that ball can really come at you. Yeah, they've really been rifling some shots at him. And uh, who's ever in that wall is doing a tremendous job. I'm not sure I'd want to be in there myself. Nice ball from Gray. But Mammoth intercepts it. Actually, I don't think the number seven, Paul Duffy, saw it coming. Mammoth goes the other way. And they clear it out. Into touch by Peter Gill. So it'll be a throw in. Todd Tufel in for the Mammoth Hawks. Tufel, of course, from Wall Township. And Halleck tried to play it up the right side, but no one there. And it rolls over the end line. A goal or a goal kick coming up. For FDU, we have a substitution coming in for the Monmouth Hawks. It looks like number 12, Mike Lamatina, along with number 22, Tom McDonald. Leaving the match, number six, Paul Hammondike, along with number seven, Rusty Aronson. And there's the goal kick taken by FDU. Score knotted up, one to one. Duffy tries to get it to Gray. Oh, you don't like to see those type of clears. That's going to be a corner kick. And again, just the speed and pressure of number 15, the outside right, Patrick Gray, causing some problems for that Mammoth defense. Yeah, he's a very skillful player with an, a, a tremendous amount of speed, and they're really going to have to work on containing him. Uh, they're guilty a little bit of trying to tackle him every time he gets near the ball. He's just too quick for that. Jemai Arias takes the corner. Three Mammoth Hawks headed out. Right side, this is Cothard. Cothard takes his time. Good ball. Up in the air is King. I'll tell you, that one over the top, but King skied. And you talk about teaching fundamentals, knock it down. He did it right there. He, he bounced it over. He sure did. He did exactly what a coach wants to, to try and head the ball down towards the line. He did it too well, actually. He headed it down and bounced over the net. Fairly did a real good job after that corner kick was cleared by Mammoth. They played the ball wide rather than trying to force it right back through the middle. Usually you'll get an offside call there. Wide and slow to allow the players to get back. Exactly. And a foul against FDU. And they drive the free kick. And 
And look at that, good pressure by number nine, Nick Sacco. And the pressure by Sacco actually caused the Fairly Dickinson defender to bump his own goalkeeper, Higgins. And now it's even up time as number seven, Duffy, knocked uh, Sacco down. <laughs> Looked like he filed that last one away for a little bit and uh, <laughs> a little evening up there. Wouldn't be surprised to see another high flighted ball here on the keeper. He's had trouble with these. Helen chips it inside. Yeah, the way that Higgins looked on the other two directs, you're better off not trying to just put it in front, put it right at him, see what he can do with it. He didn't look good on those two, but here comes FDU on the attack. And again, contact, this time Pellin from behind. And Dave Pellin with a hard stick. It looks like it was uh, Mike King who went down. They stopped the clock. And it looks like Coach Ben Stravato doesn't appear to be too upset about it right now. You can bet Coach Stravato is going to be upset if it's a serious injury, injury to Michael King. He's a tremendous player up front and real dangerous for Fairley. He sure is a great player. And as they take a look at Mike King, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Martina. And Wilson was off sides and he knew it. Vogler chips it too long, tried to get it to number 18, Mark Wilson. Good ball up the right side, but it goes out of bounds. The score is one to one. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of college soccer on TV 34. Bobby Mammoth really seems to be uh, forcing the issue to number 18, Mark Wilson. He's a great player in the middle there, but he's marked by two and three players. And, and uh, number three, Robbie Fogler is an excellent winger for Mammoth. Hasn't seen much of the ball. I think it'd be better to go to him once in a while. To Fell, gets it to Wilson. He's double teamed. Wilson, good size and strength, but this time it's taken away. King with a little bump against Halleck. And this time they call a foul against FDU. This is Dave Pellin. Wilson being marked very tightly by Chris Colthard. I think Mammoth would be a lot better to get the balls wide to uh, La Martina and to Fogler and, and, and try and get those defenders away from Wilson, get him uh, maybe with one player on him instead of two or three, it'd be a lot more dangerous. Good inside run by Fogler, nips it forward, but a little bit too long. And Fogler and defender Peter Gill have some words. Robbie Fogler, a good player, and I'll tell you, Bobby, he's a little nasty out on the field. A little bump, he'll talk to the other player. <laughs> He protects his own territory. Every team needs a couple of Robbie Foglers on the team. Uh, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. He goes in hard, he goes in clean though. Wilson again being chased by number 11, Colthard, tries to get it to La Matina, but taken away by Peter Gill. And now it's Gill playing it up the field, but into touch. And you can see the Monmouth coaching staff. That was Joe Donahue along with Bob Graney, the assistant coach. Also assisting Joe this year is Jim Harrison, former St. Rose High School and Rutgers University assistant coach. Somebody told me the other day they're known as the St. Rose Connection. Joe having been the head coach there, and Bobby Graney attended St. Rose, and, and, and had Jimmy Harrison was the head coach at St. Rose for a couple of years. And I think a good call by the official that time. Mike King was breaking away, and number two, Dave Pellin, chased him down and hooked him. And this time they're going to throw the yellow card at Dave Pellin. 
So Monmouth's going to have to be careful. Yellow cards against Len Turi, along with Dave Pellin, for consistent violent play is really what the yellow card is for. And the referees try to not allow you to just beat up on one particular player. And Mike King's been roughed up a little this afternoon. He certainly has. He, he deserves to be protected. He's uh, certainly a marked man today. And he should be because he's a great player. This time they flick it in, but there's another whistle and a push against Fairleigh Dickinson. So they went with the quick little chip inside the 18. It was flicked on, and goalkeeper Zabilowicz had it covered, but a foul was called, a push against Fairleigh Dickinson. One thing that always used to get me, Bobby, was uh, if a defender pulls a forward down from behind, he gets carded for a flagrant foul. But the forward's usually allowed to run over the defender. He gets called for the foul, but nothing else happens. Well, Joe Donahue walked right out on the field. He saw that one of his players was injured. They finally have stopped it. And uh, the trainer, Terry McHugh, is out there. There's Joe. And Joe Donahue not happy right now. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Welcome back to Monmouth College. The injured player was Todd Tufel. He appears to be okay. He's remained in the match. The score is tied one to one. Scoring at the 15 minute mark was Declan Duffy, excuse me, Declan Daly on a penalty kick for FDU. And 15 seconds later, Nick Sacco unassisted off a free kick tied it. FDU looks for more right here. And that went out of bounds. He was certainly not afraid to take the shots when they get anywhere within that 18-yard box, Bobby. Uh, every one of their players capable of putting the ball in the net, and they, they certainly hit it hard, and a, a few shots that they've taken so far today just missed wide. And that's number seven, Paul Duffy, a dangerous midfielder, just took that last shot, and I think that's one tactical move that uh, will help FDU. Before they were trying to get it inside too close. They've got to loosen it up and fire, and they can shoot the ball hard. Why not take that 20 or 25 yarder? A, a lot of times, shots like that, even if they don't go in the net, are very effective, Bobby, because it wakes the defense up a little bit. They, they realize they have to come up and defend a little bit closer and create some more space for other players to come through. Helen tried to play it wide to Todd Tufel, but too much pace on it. Declan Daly. Einskopf. And that's going to be a trip against Brian Einskopf. Unintentional. He didn't mean to do that, but there's no such thing as an unintentional trip. A trip is a trip is a trip. Number 11, Todd Tufel, not too pleased with that play. Gave uh, the Fairly player a little clap when he walked by. Sacco. Jamei Arias tried to shield it, finally taken away. Tufel can't keep it in. It just went over the end line. Tufel tried to cut it back, couldn't quite get away with it. It'll be a goal kick for FDU. Number seven back into the match, Rusty Aronson for Mammoth. Todd Tufelt jogging into position. Todd, as we mentioned, out of Wall High School. An emotional type, highly spirited player. Mark Wilson has taken a seat on the Monmouth bench, so it looks like they'll go with Rusty Aronson at that center striker position. Nice ball right side. Gray chases it down. Being defended by Bob Olot. A little bit of contact between Olat and Gray, Patrick Gray. Tafel says, yeah, I'm okay. Zabilowicz, long goal kick right to midfield, but headed on nicely by number 11, Chris Colthard. And that's going to be a push against Tufel. FDU plays it quickly. Lamatina plays it back. And Olat gives that one away. Number 
Joe Donahue, pensive on the sideline. Right now it's tied one to one. I'm sure uh, Joe's hoping for some more of those restarts from inside the uh, 25 yards. He, he's got to be. I'm sure Joe's pretty happy with uh, the performance of his team so far. So, as we mentioned, this is an, a, a great team that Fairley has here, and Monmouth really has been able to, to stay with them. Look at Mike King control the ball in the corner, double team, just kept possession until it was finally knocked out, a corner kick coming up for his team, the Knights of Fairley Dickinson University. dangerous by Rusty Aronson almost put his face right down by the foot of Mike King here comes the Hawks on the counter Fogler let it get away from him though and it's knocked into touch by Declan Daly good counter attack though they broke out of there real well sure was they pushed four four or five players into the attack very quickly and I think that's what mama's gonna have to look to most of the day Terry Higgins uh, has that leg heavily taped, the left knee, he kind of flopped after that. He didn't look real strong on that save either. No, he didn't. Again, again, it was a flighted ball that caused him some problems, and the wind really has let up here, so I don't think the wind can really be a factor as far as that ball is concerned. Daly takes the throw in, gets it to King. Oh, nice ball. It was turned, actually. That was Einskopf, not King, as he turned with the left foot and drove it hard across, but cleared out by the Hawks. One big difference between college and, and high school soccer, Bobby. It's just so more physical out here. It really is. It's funny. The pace is usually a little bit slower. They like to push the ball around, but when it gets into those danger areas, they sure, certainly tighten it up, and it does get physical. Well, Mike King fired from about 23. It was deflected over the end line, so another corner kick for FDU. Monmouth coming into the match at 7-4. and four. Fairley Dickinson at 5-3-2. and two. A break for Monmouth as that one was knocked straight down in front of Mark Zabilowicz, but no one there for Fairley Dickinson. Looks like they like to go with that little outswinger. They hook it away from the goalkeeper and let their players pull out to about the 18 and run onto it. A lot of coaches have started doing that recently on corners, Bobby. Uh, it used to be believed that the toughest ball to handle was the in-swingers that went towards the goal, but actually that's being played right at the keeper and, and it's easier to defend. Uh, the ball working its way away from the keeper, an outswinger, uh, sometimes you get the keeper to hesitate on his line or whatever and you have players running onto it can create a lot of dangerous things. Well, so far we are tied at one to one. We're in the first half as Nick Sacco hustles up the left side and finally knocked away. But Sacco, I'll tell you, Bobby, has really shown a lot of skill and a lot of heart out there in the midfield. He sure has. He's got some real quick moves there, and he's been dangerous. I, I notice he's over on the left side of the field now. He started the game off on the right and plays well on both sides. Fogler just turned and tried to switch the field, but nobody there. And finally cleared up field by Colthard. Sacco. Fogler looks for the opening. What a shot! Robbie Fogler hammers it into the net and celebrates. Great play by Robbie Fogler as we see him going crazy at number three. A, a bad defensive play by Fairley Dickinson. They got caught standing watching Fogler, and he certainly didn't make any, any mistake, but he had volleyed it uh, past the diving Higgins into the net. Robbie Fogler out of Brick Memorial High School, and you just saw why he was one of the top goal scorers in Ocean County when he played down there at Brick Memorial two years ago. Let's take another look at it. Here you see the ball bouncing, the defender trying to get to him, and not in time, Fogler hammers it away into the net. I don't think the defender thought that he was going to volley it, because he, uh, he could have actually beaten him to the ball had he run forward a couple more steps. Yeah, he certainly looked slow on that, recovering on that, and Fogler made no mistake with it. So the Monmouth Hawks lead it by the score of 2-1. to one. 
We are still in the first half of play. We're playing two 45 minute halves. And Joe Donahue keeping all that self-control. He knows there's a long way to go and this team, Fairley Dickinson, can be explosive. They chip it in far post. Zabilowicz just got his hand on it. King settles down, beats one, beats two, fires and misses. A great play by King. Beat one defender, nutmeg the next, and then shot it far to the wide, far to the post. Great move by King, went right through the legs of Dave Pellin. I wonder if he yelled nutmeg on the way <laughs> by like the players like to do in practice. <laughs> That's a good way to get hurt. <laughs> It's also the kind of thing you mentioned earlier about filing things away. It's, it's something that defenders will file away. They don't like to be embarrassed when an offensive player beats them and takes the ball right between their legs. And uh, they put it away and they remember. Terry Higgins, obviously bothered by that left knee. Be interesting to see if uh, Coach Scrivada will make a goalkeeper switch at halftime. Yeah, he's got four keepers on his rosters, and we know that he's used three in the past. Heinzkoff, all blocked. Great effort by on the far side by number four, Paul Halleck. Now you can see why you have to have your stomach in shape. Paul Halleck just stood right in there and blocked that attempted cross, and that hurts. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> You'll see a lot of players go down on a ball hit at him like that, and Halleck uh, just took it and stood there and kept on defending. Here comes Duffy. Watch out, Duffy at the 18. And they scream for a dangerous play. And let's see if they ever get it. I think they did get the call. Duffy was knocked down, had the ball surrounded with his body, and you really can't do that. It does put you in a dangerous position, and it looks like he did get kicked. He certainly did. If, uh, if the dangerous play had been whistled just a fraction of a second before, the ball wouldn't have been volleyed into him while he was laying on the, on the ground. And he was in a dangerous situation. Well, there you can see the story. Monmouth leading it 2-1 to one in the first half. We are at Monmouth College, and we certainly hope you're enjoying the action. This is top level soccer. Joe Donahue talking to Jimmy Harrison. Of course, Jimmy Harrison, we mentioned, former head coach at St. Rose High School and assistant at Rutgers. Uh, Jimmy was quite a player in his day up at Hartwood College and uh, had a number of professional tryouts with uh, all kinds of professional teams. Yeah, Jimmy's just a diehard soccer person. He's, uh, as you said, he's been involved in some professional teams. He's coached at St. Rose. He's been the assistant at Rutgers last year. Now he's teamed up once again with Joe Donahue here at Monmouth College, and he does a great job himself. He's a very knowledgeable person. He's uh, really into soccer. Also was a graduate assistant soccer coach at Lafayette. So uh, Jimmy's been around in terms of soccer. And the injured player is number seven, Paul Duffy. Looks like they're looking at Duffy's knee or ankle. And with the score two to one, Monmouth leading it. We will take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Back to Monmouth College. The injured player is Paul Duffy. He's being taken off the field and he'll be replaced by number 24. Here we go, Shaban Kolachi. <laughs> That's one of the American players on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Shaban from Staten Island, New York. Wilson heads it on and cleared upfield by number five, Gary Young. Halleck. Nice ball. Sacco in the midfield. Plays it wide. Two fellas there. Fogler retreats for help. Fogler, plenty of room. He'll wait for some pressure, and that time he gave it away. And sometimes when you have too much room or too much time, you get shaken up, you don't know what to do with it. Yeah, they slowed it down a little bit too much there. They had players on the outside open, and again, they tried to force it through the middle. Coulthard. 
And Mike King wanted a trip, but the referee says, let's see what he does say. He Originally, he trip. pointed for the throw, and now he's going to call the trip. I think it was a question of whether the ball was out of bounds before the trip or not. So it will be a free kick for FDU. Left-footed drive out towards the right wing. And FDU comes away with yet another throw. Great ball. Leominski, nice ball out to Fogler. Fogler has it poked away by Declan Daly. Now they go the other way. Mike King plays it wide. Einskopf. Good defensive job by Mammoth Hawks. This is Mark Wilson. This is his strength, the breakaways. We were talking before about what a great job Robbie Fogler did on handling that goal, Bobby, but just a couple seconds before, they had a quick counterattack, and he, again, tried to force it through the middle. He had two players going to the outside for him wide open. Well, most coaches will take that mistake if you promise to come back with uh, a goal like he just scored. Yeah, absolutely. Wilson, nice ball. Kanyak. Mike King, number one. Nice ball, but too long. Right idea. Chris Colthard was open, but the pace of the pass a little too much. Couldn't quite get up to it. And uh, it looks right now, late in the first half, by the players are a little tired. Yeah, it does. It's been a very uh, quick pace to the game. They've really been going at it. We said before it was kind of physical. And maybe it's having its toll on his players. Zabilowicz, long punt, headed down by number five, Gary Young. Tufel. And Tufel beat the defender to the ball, but then actually stepped over it and rolled into touch. A quick throw in taken by FDU. Mammoth leads it two to one. Late in the first half, we're here at Monmouth College. Bob Lampin and Bob Hogan bringing you the action. Hope you're enjoying it, because it's some great action. This is Wilson, tried to get it to Fogler. Look at Wilson, never says die. Just continually chases, pressures the ball, pressures the ball. Heinzkoff, nice touch. But Colthard could not. Come up with the trap, a throw in for the Hawks. Number four, Paul Halleck takes it. Fogler, good, shields it well. Good defense, give some credit to Declan Daly that time. He did a real nice job. Fogler was doing a good job of shielding and really had nowhere to go. Heinzkoff, Gray. Arias, Arias still has it. A hard drive taken by number 24, Kalechi. And Sacco, with a semi-clear, got it high up in the air. Heinz Koff, he's dangerous. And again, the referee had his flag raised for an offside. The, there is an injured player down on the field. The linesman had his flag raised. It looks like, uh, can't see who the injured player is. Number three, Robbie Fogler. There he is. But a number of times, uh, Bob, the linesman has raised his flag and the man in the middle has waved him off, which is certainly within his rights. It, yeah, it is within his rights. As we take a look at Coach Joe Donahue. There's the corner, King fans on it. Oh, great defensive job, they covered it up quickly. 
A little bit, little bit of a mistake by goalkeeper Mark Zabilowicz on that last corner. Bobby came out, looked like he swatted at the ball rather than punching for it. And it came right down to the Fairley Dickinson player, but his defense covered real well for him was able to uh, play it out. The break for Monmouth, Mike King had the first shot at it, and he actually whiffed on it. He fanned completely, and then the shot was taken by Chris Coulthard. He missed it, but had King gotten his foot on it, it was a wide open net. We are playing two 45-minute halves. We are well under a minute in the first half. We don't have a clock here. Uh, with the injuries, the official can add time. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to have quite a bit of injury time here. Well, answers that question. There's the horn to score at halftime. Mammoth leads it 2-1. to one. We'll be back with the second half right after this. On the scoring totals for you, there's our summary. FDU broke out to a one to nothing lead as Declan Daly hit on a penalty kick at the 18-18 mark, but the Mammoth Hawks didn't waste much time coming back. Nikki Sacco unassisted on a 19-yard free kick at 19.05 to tie it up one to one. And then Rob Fogler from Sacco at 36 minutes of that opening half gives Mammoth that two to one lead going into the second half. And uh, Bob Joe Donahue has to be very pleased with the way his team played in that first half, particularly coming back because it was a tough call on the penalty kick. Yeah, the penalty kick was a questionable call, and uh, as you mentioned, within a minute, Monmouth comes right back and ties it up. A, a, a very nice ball played in by uh, Sacco, but also misplayed by the goalkeeper from uh, Fairley. He's having a little bit of trouble on balls in the air. And then again, Fogler with an excellent goal, uh, hammering it into the net past Higgins. And Monmouth with a 2-1 to lead. They're sitting pretty, and uh, we should be in for a great second half. Okay, so it will be Fairley Dickinson kicking off. FDU at 5-3-2 and two on the year. They were defeated by Rutgers in the Met Metropolitan Life Game of the Week last week, 2-1, to one, and that had to be a great matchup between two excellent teams from New Jersey. We saw Rutgers earlier in the season as they defeated Monmouth 3-1, to one, so it's obvious that the Hawks can play with anybody in the country right now because these are... Teams like Rutgers and Fairley and Dickinson always right up there with the best in the nation. And right now, Monmouth leads it by one goal. I'm sure uh, they're just looking to hold on. They'd love to win it two to one. Uh, I don't think they're too greedy right now. Uh, they'd like to win it any way they can, Bobby. I'm sure you're going to see them play a little bit more defensive minded than they have. Uh, but you can't go 45 minutes just playing defense. They're going to have to push forward, maybe a quick counter attack here and there when they can. Couldn't agree with you more. I don't think you even think about uh, playing defensively at this point. Joe Donahue, I'm sure, told his team, go out there. You've gotten two already. The easiest way to win is to keep the ball in your offensive half of the field. Don't let the other team score. Don't let them shoot. You can't lose. That's exactly right. And for some reason, players, when they get in a game like this, they start feeling like they have to defend and have to defend in order to get the win. And really, a lot of times, they forget their offense. Einskopf inside. Zabilowicz, what a save. Good effort by Mark Zabilowicz. Einskopf knife through, was wide open, took it well, but Zabilowicz off his line and smothered it. That was definitely the save of the match so far. The man came through, wide open, ball right on his feet, and Zabilowicz showing no respect for his body at all, diving at his feet and knocking it away. And FDU coming out of the starting gate quickly here in the second half, putting the pressure on early. Playing 45-minute halves. We are at Monmouth College, and once again, we are not afforded the luxury of a press box to give you that real high angle you're used to seeing on our soccer coverage. Bobby, I expect to see Fairley really come out strong here. The first five, ten minutes is going to be crucial for Monmouth to try and keep them off the board. Well, right now, if uh, the way the first two minutes of the half uh, have gone or any indication, FDU is really exploding out here. They're putting... Heavy pressure on Todd Tufel coming back into the game for Monmouth. It'll be a corner kick. Tony DiCarlo will take it. FDU withdraws most of their players out to the 18-yard line. DiCarlo, and he gave that one away. Didn't like that call. 
or that kick at all. DiCarlo just shanked it behind the net, and as a coach, boy, that drives you nuts. It surely does. Uh, you don't expect to see that too much at the high school level, and then here we are at a top-notch college game, and he makes a mistake like that. That's a wasted opportunity. It's going to be important for Mammoth to be able to keep uh, fairly off the board for maybe the first five, ten minutes here. They're certainly going to come right at him, and then maybe a quick counter for Mammoth as we take a look at head coach Ben Stravato for Fairley. And Mammoth can come back maybe with a quick counterattack and put in a third. It could, it could break Fairley's back because they have played well here today. Aronson tried to give a little lead to Wilson, but much too long. Terry Higgins still in the nets for Fairley Dickinson. Uh, Halftime statistically anyway, Bobby, uh, FDU enjoying a pretty heavy shot advantage. Yeah, certainly. You could tell that FDU had the territorial advantage for the mo most of the first half. They had 12 shots to Mama's four. However, Mammoth made him count a lot more. We have, we have to remember that Fairley scored on a penalty shot, a questionable one. Mammoth came back, scored on a free kick, and then a great goal by Robbie Fogler. Saves in the game also show something that uh, Fairley hasn't been real accurate with their shots. Both keepers credited with two saves apiece. And another important aspect that the, 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 there have been two yellow cards issued to Mammoth players, Len Turi and Dave Pellin, and they're certainly going to have to be careful here in the second half that they don't pick up a second yellow. One statistic that we don't have, Bobby, is how many saves the uh, defenders have made for Mama. They've blocked about five shots, uh, just taking it right in the stomach or in the chest. Yeah, they've really done a good job in front of goalkeeper Zabilowicz. A couple times he's been out of the net, forced out of the net, and they've, they've made the save there. And also, on um, the free kicks, I know they've stopped three or four shots uh, dead into the wall, and they've made no mistake with it. Mark Zabilowicz, you can see him shield his eyes from the sun, and that can be a factor. Team chips one in, the goalkeeper looks up and gets blinded temporarily. Uh, pretty tough to save the soccer ball when you can't see. Yeah, he's going to have to battle the sun here a little bit, and also the wind is beginning to pick up a little bit in Fairley's favor. And it certainly appeared in the first half that the wind caused all kinds of problems for the, the Fairley keeper, Tim Higgins. And that one rolls into touch. Paul Duffy will take the throw in. Halleck and King locked up in another struggle. Halleck just hooks King a little bit, and that's a foul, free kick. FDU, Paul Duffy to take it. And they chip far post, and that one's gonna run too long over the end line, goal kick for Monmouth. Bobby, any players at a high school level or under uh, who don't wear shin guards in this game should have a talk with Michael King afterwards. <laughs> He's been hit a number of times today, and if it wasn't for those shin guards, I think he'd be out of the match. Well, you just saw a little dejected uh, Paul Duffy miss hit that free kick, and Zabilowicz again shields his eyes from the sun, takes the goal kick, and it's headed down by number 12, Jamey Arias. Pellin. Knocked it forward, miss hit by number 11, Chris Colthard. Terry Higgins. Einskopf, nice overlap by number 18, McCanyak. And everybody's screaming for a foul. Einskopf went down, Tufel went down, or Halleck went down, excuse me. This is Fogler. Nicky Sacco grabs his head. He had the right idea, just want to put a little touch. Joe Donahue says, come on, get back. Joe uh, loves to talk with his hands out there. He, he sure does. I think what Joe's telling Nicky is that the ball was over on that side of the field for three, four, five touches there. He, I think he wanted him to turn and start playing it out towards his other midfielder on the other side. Tufel takes that one away. McCanyak had it taken away. Now it's Mammoth. They'll look to slow it down. Plenty of space that time. May have given a pass up early, but they got away with it momentarily. Heinz cough. 
Pellin against him. Pellin just pokes it away. Nice tackle. Rusty Aronson goes to Wilson. Wilson one on one. And Higgins came off the line quickly and almost a mistake in the defense that time as Gary Young poked it back to Higgins almost too hard. I think that's exactly what Mama's going to look for, Bobby. Again, that quick counterattack to a very quick Mark Wilson up front. And it looks like they've done a good job of withstanding that pressure that Fairley put on him real early in the half. Nice move by Michael King. Knocked up field. Torrey took it, settled down though by FDU's Arias. And Michael King goes down again. Dave Pallon, or Pellin picked up the foul. There's Mark Wilson, the quick center forward that Mama's trying to break loose. Some of the fans really upset. They think that uh, Mike King is a great actor. And they're unhappy. They feel that King, every time he gets bumped, he's taking a dive and getting the calls. They're going to take this free kick over again. This time they'll await the second whistle by the official. Here it comes. Chip just outside the far post. And the referee gave them a second free kick because he was moving the wall back to require 10 yards before the kick was taken. Players weren't set, so he gave him another one. In that case, it was actually a benefit for FDU because the first one wasn't very good. It On that last play, Bobby, uh, Mamet did an excellent job of defending that ball that was flighted towards the far post. Uh, there was a, 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 a fairly player there trying to knot it down into the net, but a good job. I, th I think Mamet got away with a call there. It looked like they flicked it over the end line and got a goal kick out of it. Yeah, I thought Fogler actually headed it out. Heinzkoff heads it down. King tries to get to it. And they're going to call a handball outside the area. Uh. Just outside. And again, they're going to have to move the wall back. This very dangerous, just at the 18. Bouncing ball. Again, that's a tough call. Yeah, that was a, that was a tough call. It looked, looked at, like uh, the ball played the Mammoth player, and uh, he didn't slap it down or anything like that. And to give a free kick at the top of the 18 to players like this, it's Again, it's given away a great scoring opportunity. Let's see if they try to go around the wall. They're 0 for 3 going through it. Well, they try to bend it, and they bend it all right. A beautiful goal. They bend it around the wall into the left corner, and it's 2 to 2. Well, that was bound to happen, Bobby. You can't give a pl uh, players of this ability that many shots from uh, the top of the 18. <laughs> Things like that are going to happen. Same exact shot as And we're going to take another look at it. See, he bent it actually over the wall uh, into the upper left-hand corner from, uh, against the Billowets. It was taken by number seven, Paul Duffy. So the score tied two to two, and uh, the Hawks have to be a little upset. I, I think uh, they might disagree on both of the calls, both of the calls as a result of fouls. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's an announcer here that disagrees with it also. Uh, <laughs> I, I really didn't like the, the penalty kick at all. And, and then there, that, as I said, the ball did not play the player. Uh, the ball played the player. The player didn't play the ball. And you can't give uh, players like this that many opportunities at the top of the 18. They're going to score eventually. And FDU looking for more. They've tied it up 2-2. Two -two. That'll be a dangerous play against number three, Brian Einskopf. What really gets frustrating, Bobby, is here we are with uh, two, two excellent teams playing, and we've had four goals scored, and three of the four goals have been on restart situations. A, a penalty kick and then two free kicks from the field. Fogler plays it down the right side. Rusty Aronson chases it down. Aronson looks for help. Wilson lets it play through. And number 22, Tom McDonald did not read the dummy that Wilson played. It would have been a perfect play had McDonald continued to move forward. It sure was. Uh, Wilson very alert, knowing McDonald was overlapping from behind, and he did let it run through. It would have been a great dummy. <laughs> and a great nutmeg right there. Oh, that was pretty. <laughs>
comes Tony DiCarlo up the right side. DiCarlo with plenty of space. Cuts it back, nice ball. Einskopf tees it up over the top. Great ball by DiCarlo there coming down the right side. A lot of wingers will make a mistake and just try and cross it towards the far post, but he saw Anskow right op wide open at the top of the 18 there, and he, he did a good job of settling it down and firing it just wide. Goalkeeper Mark Zabilowicz gets set. Paul Hammondike has checked back into the match for the Hawks at Monmouth. Tied up 2-2. Tufel can't save it, runs into touch. FDU will come up with a throw in. Good ball game though, both teams playing real hard. There you can see the team records coming in. FDU at five, three and two, Monmouth at seven and four. Uh, the skill level, really nice to watch. Not too many missed traps or anything and when either team tees up the shot, forget it, they hammer it. Young cuts it across. Nicky Sacco got away with a break there. He, he got caught ball watching a little bit. His man came right through and just missed kicked on the ball. Fogart goes long, but chested down by Peter Gill. And they play it back to Higgins. If you're gonna go long, you're gonna have to put it on the foot of Wilson and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Otherwise, you're just knocking it to their sweeper. Yeah, Peter Gill is an excellent player. A real good sweeper, very strong in the air and good with the feet. And as you said, they're gonna have to put the ball on people's feet because uh, he'll just beat everybody to the ball. And the referee corrects himself. He pointed in the wrong direction. It was a hold against number 10, Tony DiCarlo. So the Hawks get the free kick. Bob Olat to take it. We are in the second half here at Monmouth College. Two fine teams tied up two to two. Monmouth and Fairleigh Dickinson University. Oh, we're gonna have a yellow card here. And no doubt about that one. You cannot run in there until the ball moves 27 inches and Tony DiCarlo got 27 inches away from the ball before the thing was kicked. <laughs> he sure did. So they'll get another free kick. Olat will try it again. The New Jersey Soccer Coaches Association uh, has an organization this year which is working very hard to promote soccer on the college level and one of the things that they've enlisted is support from the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company and this week's MetLife Players of the Week were Bobby Joe Esposito, the offensive player, and Fairleigh Dickinson's Chris Colthar defensively from that tough Rutgers FDU game which was won by Rutgers 2-1. to one. And Bobby, we are entrusted with picking the offensive player and defensive players of the match in this one today. And you're the expert, so <laughs> don't forget to keep your eye out. We got a ways to go, but I, I got to lean. There's Jim Colclaw, the athletic director here at Monmouth College. Jim enjoying the action, and uh, he certainly has seen a number of his teams moving forward. I know that the cross country team's doing very well here at Monmouth. Of course, the soccer team's done well. Bad team. Uh, Working real hard. They're hard to believe it'll be basketball season pretty soon. Girls soccer in the first year at Monmouth College. Uh, coach Ridley, former head coach at Manalapan, is running the show here at Monmouth on the girls level. Yeah, he's doing a real nice job so far with the first year team too, Bobby. I believe they're at the 500 mark, three and three. And Ben Stravato right now not interested in uh, Scott Ridley's team, the girls <laughs> team. He's sweating this one out. It's tied up 2-2. Fell takes the throw. Mark Wilson, number 18 for Monmouth. He's the guy they're trying to spring loose, and he's been marked very tightly this whole second half by Gary Young, number five. This is Colthard. DiCarlo inside the 18, heads it past one player, and DiCarlo grabs a, a piece of Olad's arm. That should be a foul against FDU, and it is. 
Number 10, Tony DiCarlo picked up the foul. Zabilowicz will place the ball down at the spot of the infraction. Little contact there, but no call. It looked like number 11, uh, Chris Coulthard, had a running start. <laughs> Here's trouble. Here comes Wilson, one-on-one, -on -one. Wilson. And just knocked away. Gary Young marking uh, Wilson. Fogler, he's upended, no call, and I don't think there should have been that time. Fogler a little bit out of control. King tried to get it to DiCarlo, but Zabilowicz intercepted. Impressed with uh, number one, Mike King, Bobby. Uh, he's really got a good head for this sport. He sure does. He's an excellent player. He, he really reads his other player as well. He looks for him, and he's very dangerous himself up front. I tell you, he's played really well for Mama so far as goalkeeper uh, Mark Zabilowicz, Bobby. He certainly takes control of that penalty area. He wants the ball. He certainly lets his defenders know he's coming for it. There's the Billowitz in the nets for Mammoth. We had a foul called against FDU. Bob Olot waits till everybody's set. Here he goes and goes with the low drive that was partially blocked. Halleck flights it inside. A little contact there. Uh, that was a good save by Higgins. That time came off of his line. Yeah, it was. Higgins looked good on that one. Uh, he read that. Uh, uh, Halleck was through. I'm sorry, Hamadike was through and uh, did a good job of getting there, but just before he struck the ball. Sacco to take the corner. Scott McLaughlin is the cameraman. Let's Wilson sets up inside. And they just clear it away. Nothing else you can do. That ball was hooking towards the near post. That doesn't surprise me too much. I think you're going to see the ball played uh, in the vicinity of goalkeeper Higgins. They're going to test him uh, again in the air. He's looked uh, shaky there at times. Drive past the far post. Fogler up in the air too soon to fell. Sacco with time. Goes far post. Not a bad idea. Tried to hook it to that opposite post. He missed it, but not by much. Not by much. That was a good ball by him. Also a good ball played back in by Todd to fell to the far side to, to set Sacco up there. Sacco, I think, just tried to hook it. Played it towards that post, tried to bend it into the upper corner, but just missed it. Goal kick taken by Chris Coulthard, last year's Met Life Player of the Week. Heinzkoff to Carlo. <laughs> they got away with one on that one. I'm starting to get some heat in the truck. Did I say last year's player of the week? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and I missed it. I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> I'll tell you, you're not listening. <laughs> FDU puts the pressure on. Duffy, nice ball through, but he's offsides. Mike King looking for goal number 83 on his career at FDU, but that time he was offside. Ben Stravato on the sideline, the head coach for FDU. Just a minute ago, he was really letting the linesman have it. I don't know what he was upset about. But uh, he had some choice words for the linesman closest to him. I hope he wasn't arguing that offside call. The guy was offside no, no. by about 15 yards there. In New Jersey, Division I rankings at this point, Rutgers ranked number one, Fairleigh Dickinson number two, and Monmouth number three in the state. If we look at the uh, two-year schools, it's Mercer and Union ranked one and two. DiCarlo, watch out Zabilowicz up in the air. It's right in front, cleared off the line. Zabilowicz can't believe there was no foul that time. He was up, up in the air. He was bumped. King has it taken away. And they finally settle it down and get it back to goalkeeper Mark Zabilowicz. So the score is 2-2. Two to two. We're in the second half. 
Goals by Daly and Duffy for FDU and Sacco and Fogler for Monmouth. Sacco slips down and was cleared out by number 14, Peter Gill. Outside, left side. Bobby, we've seen uh, a number of questionable goals scored here this afternoon. I certainly hope in a 2-2 game here that uh, whichever team does win the game, that it's a, it's a nice buildup and a nice goal that results in a win. Well, mistakes do, uh, do really hurt you. Nice ball flighted inside, headed over the end line. That should be a corner kick. You, know, you talk about questionable goals, but questionable goals come away very often by mistakes. Uh, you have to remember, maybe a penalty kick should or should not have been, been called, but somehow they got the ball in there to begin with. They deserve some credit. Exactly. They've had the pressure on, and they've been able to create those opportunities. I think the breaks are about even. Uh, all right, questionable penalty kick, but then again, uh, you can't tell me that Saka was trying to score on that first <laughs> goal. The keeper kicked not. it in. Absolutely not. Corner kick for Monmouth. Score tied 2-2. This time they go short. Wilson gives it back. This is Nicky Sacco. Accelerates, but the ball gets away from him and blasted out. It'll be a throw in for the Hawks. Todd Tufel. He will take the throw as you take a look at the attack setting up and the defense for FDU getting organized. He can throw the ball. I look for a little flick on here. That famous flick on play. <laughs> and let's see, that one goes over the end line. Another corner coming up for the Hawks. Nicky Saka will take this kick also. He'll be kicking from the right side. And the goalkeeper and the FDU defense, so far they've seen the short corner. They've seen uh, Monmouth try to go far post. Let's see what they do this time. This time they go pull it out a little bit, headed on by number two, Pellin, but it was blocked. They go the other way. Einskopf looks to counterattack. Well, King is offsides if they play it to him, but they don't play it to him. And finally, the foul called against Einskopf. Good thing that Einskopf didn't see King right away because he was wide open. Yeah, he was streaking in uh, completely unmarked, and by the time Einskopf did see him, if he had played it through, he would have been offside. You look down the sideline, Joe Donahue, the Monmouth College coach walking towards you, and Ben Stravato, the gentleman with his hands in his pockets. This is Sacco. Hammerdyke tries to play it back to Halleck. Halleck runs it down, gets it to Todd to fell. And the referee says, no, it was not a over the sideline for a throw, and it was a push. It'll be a free kick for Monmouth. I'm not quite sure what the call was there. I, I thought they had a throw-in signal. That Linesman signaled for a push and the referee concurred. Nice ball by Halleck, up in the air. Aronson way up that time. And dangerous play, the call against Nick Sacco. Went up, tried to come up with a little bicycle kick. Mark Wilson sets up. Bobby, I think, I think Monmouth might be a little better off rather than trying to flight those balls in on the uh, on the Fairleigh Dickinson defenders on those free kicks. Uh, maybe play something short. They're, everything's being headed right out by the defense of Fairleigh. And they're real good in the air, and Monmouth's not having too much success with that. Well, right there, that's an effective ball. Square it up, slow it down, and then take the shot. Wow. Nice shot. Tufel hammered it. It was deflected. That should be a corner. That shot was deflected. Well, that just missed Bobby, and he had goalkeeper Terry Higgins uh, fooled again. He got there real late, a couple inches inside. That ball's in the net. And the trainer, Terry McHugh, 
Back out on the field. Someone else shaking up. It looks like Paul Halleck. There's Terry. Now my eyes going now. That shot was deflected. I thought it was deflected. As they take a look at Paul Halleck on the far side, we'll take a break. Stay with us. We'll be back with more in just a minute. We are back at Monmouth College with the score still tied 2-2. Two to two. Paul Halleck was the injured player. He appears to be okay. Joe Donahue imparting some instructions. Looks like Mark Wilson telling Mark, come on, you got to go on some angles here. Take him away and then run inside as Ben Stravato from FDU. He's a little less intense right now. We're less demonstrative. And we know that Joe recently teaching. Joe's done a great job. He certainly has. Uh, again, his team today has played really well against a top-notch top team. And they're right in the game. Mike King. Nice move by King. Left foot pulls it back. Einskopf up in the air, but it was a little too high. A little poke into the back of Halleck. Mike King, uh, very dangerous in the first half. They've silenced him a little bit here in the second half. Yeah, they've tightened up on, on King quite a bit. Uh, he's got a shadow in, in, at first, Dave Pellin, and now Paul, um, Paul Halleck. They're, they're just following him everywhere he goes. Declan Daly couldn't handle that one. Score tied two to two. Substitution coming in for Mammoth. It's number 22, Tom McDonnell. And with the score tied, if it should remain tied at the end of regulation, we'll go two 10 minute overtimes. It is not sudden death. With that thought in mind, Bobby, I believe we have about 15 minutes left in this half. DiCarlo and Zabilowicz gathers it in. Nice pass from number one. Michael King got it to Tony DiCarlo. DiCarlo didn't really hit the shot well, and Zabilowicz was able to make the save. Of course, uh, I mentioned we have 15 minutes left, Bobby. That's with my unofficial timex here. We don't have a scoreboard or anything. The time is kept on the field. Rusty Aronson goes down. And... Terry McHugh once again comes out, another injury. So they're playing for keeps, a lot of contact out there. There's a score, two to two. As we mentioned, Fairleigh Dickinson with a record of five, three, and two. Their coach, Ben Stravato, has put together quite a program. Our next soccer game on TV 34, Sunday at seven o'clock, Jackson to meet Bricktown High School. We hope you'll be with us for that one, Jackson Township under coach Mike Costa having a great season. And as I was mentioning, uh, Ben Stravada has certainly put together some program and he's ably assisted by Igor Chipenko. Just got word from the sidelines, 17 minutes remaining in the match, so the uh, Timex doing pretty well. <laughs> There's the throw in taken. Jamey Arias. Arias gets it to Einskopf. And the hard shot taken by Paul Duffy, but Zabilowicz right there. Good technique by Mark. Got his body behind it. Yeah, that's what I'd like to see. A nice ball played out to the defender, checking back, and now he's got all this room to run into the attack. It's a nice buildup. Low pressure by FDU, and it pays off. That happens sometimes, the low pressure. You're really not used to it, and you just give it away. That time they miss hit the cross. Number 12, La Matina, comes back in. There he is, and he's replaced. It looks like Halleck's going to take a seat. Paul Halleck, a... Hard-nosed defender, really works hard out there. He's done, played very well today. Don't forget, Bobby, we have to select an offensive player of the game and a defensive player of the match. That's going to be a tough choice right now. Oh, Einskopf wide open. Oh, and he missed it. Oh. Uh, he's going to regret that. He had, he had Zipilowicz at his mer mercy. He had all the time in the world. And he, he tried to chip it over his head. I really, think, really, he could have just attacked Zabilowicz with the ball. That's right. I think a bad choice that time. Uh, he should have just hammered it either side low, and it was in the net. 
So a real break for Mammoth Ironscoff. Wide open, he missed it. I, I have a feeling that Coach Ben Stravet is going to have a real word to say after this game about a, a shot selection of that sort. Normally it's the other way around. You hammer the ball when you should try to finesse it in. And in that case, he just had to put it down low, and I think it was in the net. He, he could have even gone in alone on Zabilowicz. It really wasn't a defender within three or four yards of him. He got, he got it under control. He could have taken a couple more touches if he had to. That could prove to be a big mistake as the score is tied 2-2. Uh, one of the things that, as it's cleared out, one of the things that Monmouth has not done in the second half that they were getting in the first half, they weren't getting, they're not getting those fouls 20 or 25 yards away. And you don't get the restarts, that can hurt you. And you mentioned it earlier, Bobby, they're playing most of the balls long. I think that's why. Yeah, exactly. They, they got, oh, they got a handball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was Jemaine Rias got his hand caught in a cookie jar that time, reached down and let everyone know if tried to hide it. The referee wasn't fooled. Helpless feeling when that happens. You just want to run and hide and hide that right arm. Again, there's a, a long flighted ball, one, one by the Fairley defense again, and here they come on the quick counter. Dave Pellin has played a steady game at that stopper position. Here comes Tufel. Sacco had it tackled away. Now they go the other way. Shoulder to shoulder. What an effort by Todd Tefell. That's going to be a dangerous play against FDU. Tefell shoulder to shoulder, ran right with him. Hey, Todd, Todd's a great player for using that, that, that shoulder. He's got a lot of strength, and he's able to muscle the man off the ball, which he did. And then he forced a dangerous play as the player's laying near the ball. Now Nicky Sacco is injured down in the right corner as Terry McHugh hustles out there once again. I'll tell you, Terry, the trainer today, is earning her salary. Uh, tough job taking care of all these athletes. They're injured uh, constantly in this type of sport. The biggest problem, I think, as a trainer is when do they come out and when don't they? Yeah, it's hard to tell. A lot of times, uh, the referee doesn't even allow the trainer to come out. If the player doesn't appear to be seriously hurt, he'll let play go on. An instance like this, he waved for, for somebody to come out. In this case, uh, that's Terry's job, and she does a great job. Joe Donahue walking slowly out to take a look at Nick. Nick Sacco has uh, really done a great job in the midfield for the Hawks. He scored uh, their first goal of the match. And Paul Halleck sitting on the bench for the Monmouth Hawks. He's also played very well. It's been a tough afternoon for the defense. They've been challenged. And so far, they've done the job. Yeah, they really have. They've done a real good job here, especially in the second half of uh, shutting down number one, Michael King for Fairley. As we mentioned, he's got 81 career goals for Fairley Dickinson. He's a, an explosive type of player. He was given too much room in the first half. He, he had a lot of good opportunities. And really, here in the second half, his, his opportunities have been limited. Well, you just saw Joe Donahue's assistants. That's Joe right there. He just had a look at his assistants, Bob Graney and Jim Harrison. And we are back. Sacco appears to be okay. Time starting to run out. That's an obstruction against Bob Olap, but not a bad move. He tripped and just kind of crawled to get in the way to stop that attack. Yeah, he really didn't have anything else he could do there. He, he lost his footing. He went down on the ground and was able to get his body in the way. Another good chance here, though. Sacco plays it out wide. That's a good ball. McDonnell. Aronson plays it through, couldn't quite get it to McDonnell. Knocked into touch again. The score is two to two. We are Somewhere around the 10 minute mark remaining in the match. If it remains tied, they'll go two 10 minute overtimes. There's a shot taken by Paul Duffy, but Zabilowitz right there to make the save.
interesting, Bobby, the fact that it's tied, and yet at this point, normally it becomes much more intense, and the pace usually picks up, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Yeah, both teams appear to be a little bit fatigued here, and as we mentioned, the, the pace early in the game was, was unbearable. They were just flying all over the field, a lot of physical contact. The contact has come down a little bit. I haven't seen too many blatant fouls lately, but it does appear to have taken its toll on the players early. Or is that a question of neither team wants to be too aggressive to make the mistake? That, that's a good possibility. They might be a, a little overprotective, especially in their defense. Watch out here. Michael King almost had it. Heinzkoff takes down Mammoth player. Oh, nice tackle. They just keep coming at you. Hammerdyke. Aronson plays it through. Lamatina chases it down, but I don't think he'll catch this one. They bring it back out. Here comes number 16, Novak. Oof. And the foul called against FDU. They'll give it to Mammoth. And there's the game clock right there. You can see the time remaining, probably better than we can. The sun shining right in our monitor. Looks like it's a 10 minute mark. So it'll be a free kick for the Hawks. Bob Olat to take it. He goes far post and Higgins makes the save. Dave Pellin doing a great job. Pellin better hustle, get on King. King is broken away momentarily. Einskov plays right wing. And a good effort by number 16, Jack Novak, but he could not keep it on. It will be a throw in for Mammoth. Sacco. This is La Matina. La Matina, the old trip move, he gets away with it. Still has it. Uh, that's great skill right there. Here comes McDonald, left side. And again, he lets it get too far away from him. But stays with it, gets it back. Sacco. Almost made a great move. Just tackled away at the last second. Lions cough. He's offside. Mike King says no, but he was a good two yards off. Dave Pellin out of Freehold Township High School, and he was a defender there, Bobby, and Bill DePep, the coach of Freehold Township, they use that trap sometimes, and you could see that Pellin knew what he was doing. Stepped up, and uh, King was off. Here comes Arias. King. Tufel tackles it away. Now it's Tufel, they go the other way. It looks like Todd wants to run all day. Wilson, that's only about the fourth touch I think he's had on the ball all, all uh, second half. Yeah, they've done a real good job at defending Mark Wilson. One player who hasn't played here in the second half, and it really surprises me because he was particularly effective in the first half, Bobby, is forward Patrick Gray for, for Fairleigh Dickinson. He had a number of real intelligent runs and showed a lot of speed and skill. And he hasn't gotten in here in the second half. I don't know whether he's injured or not. This is Novak. Novak uh, finally has it knocked away and they knock it off of Novak's foot. It should be a throw in for Mammoth. Yes, it is. Yeah, good point. I thought Gray really was uh, the man who made things happen for uh, FDU. He was super quick and uh, they were having trouble defending him. And it appears here in the second half they've, they've been just pushing the ball, pushing the ball, pushing the ball forward to King. And uh, when they went outside to Gray and to the other forward who was on the outside in the first half, uh, they were really dangerous. They opened things up for King. He's, he's, he's being marked out of the match right now by Pellin. This is Aronson. And he can't do anything with it. Mammoth trying to get a substitution on. Trying to get that man number three, Rob Fogler, back into the match. There he goes. Big save in the half by Zabilowicz as he managed to snuff out a shot by Einskopf, 
And then Einskopf, wide open, tried to flick it over the head of an on-rushing Zabilowicz rather than go underneath him, and he missed it wide. And two big breaks for Monmouth. FDU could have scored two in this half easily. They've had the better opportunities. Yeah, really, Bobby, the only opportunities that Monmouth has had here in the second half that I can think of have been balls have been flighted into the area off of, off of free kicks, corners, and, and indirects and uh, free kicks from outside the area. And they really haven't had too many of them, and the ones they've had, they've been 40 or so yards away, and that's really just a little too long to try to just flight it up there. About six minutes remaining in the regulation portion of this match. The score is still two to two. Fairleigh Dickinson and Monmouth College. La Matina. Mike Lamatina showing some good skill, Bobby. Just doesn't seem to have the foot speed, though, to catch up to some of the balls that are put in front of him. I remember Mike as a high school player at Raritan High School, Bobby. He had great speed and, and just as much uh, skill as he has nowadays, but he had a real serious knee injury his senior year and seems to cut down his speed a little bit. Still has the touch, though. Good, highly skilled player. And that's a foul against FDU. <laughs> Dave Pellin will take this one. First time I ever saw them hold up a free kick for someone to <laughs> tie their shoes. This is Mike King gets past his defender, Hammondike. Uh, Trouble. Tufel has it had a very good second half. Nice ball to Sacco. Soccer. Sacco has been the guy who has to control things. I'm impressed with Nick Sacco. As a freshman particularly, he really slows things down. Wilson cuts it back. Tough break. You can see the danger of Mark Wilson. He doesn't get too many touches in the half, but he takes advantage of that one almost. He hasn't seen the ball too often here in the second half, and when he finally gets it under control, he takes it, beats the defender, cuts it back, and I believe it was a defender. He had the keeper beat, but it was a defender who cleared it off the line. So it'll be a corner kick for Monmouth College. Nicky Sacco to take it. I had just mentioned that he's a freshman. I stand corrected. He is a sophomore this year. I'm surprised that Rucker, that <laughs> Rutgers, that Fairleigh Dickinson <laughs> doesn't have more players here uh, defending. They have a lot of players up in the midfield. A little bump there, no call. Lamatina went down. Now they go the other way. Here comes number 11, Colthard. The score is tied 2-2. Colthard breaking away. Zabilowicz off the line, smothers it. Great play by Mark Zabilowicz. A long run for Colthard to come up empty. Carried it about 55 yards. He sure did, and then it's Zabilowicz off his line. That was a magic save, Bobby. He's had two of them this half. Really keeping Mammoth in it. He took it off King's foot. Good thing that he didn't cut it back, though. Had cut it across, I think King was there. Would not have been Zabilowicz's fault, though. You have to come out and force that player to take the shot. About three minutes to go in regulation. Aronson just blasts it forward, nobody there. Settled down by Arias, plays it through. Einskopf. And Einskopf tried to knock it across, but it goes over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for the Hawks. Zabilowicz will tee it up. A substitution coming in, number 22 for Monmouth, Tom McDonald. McDonald, a freshman from Mawa, light, New too. Jersey, attended Mawa High School. Be great light right here. King, nice ball. This is Arias. Oh, they play it through. Might have been off, but there's no call. It's in the net. Wow, that's going to be real interesting to see the replay I want to see that. the replay. He looked like he was off to me. It was number 11. 
Chris Coulthard. They're going to award the goal. We're going to take a look. There it is. FDU leads it. Here it is. Coulthard will come from the right, number 11. Oh, he's off. He's way off. It doesn't matter what we think up here, though. The score is FDU 3, Monmouth 2. Coulthard appeared to be offside from our angle. Novak, this is King. King cuts it back. And they say it was out of bounds. Let's take another look at it, Bobby. And we're going to see the balls played right here through. He's offside there. He's way in front of the other defender. Unless possibly number 13 for Monmouth College. Bob Olot. Bob Olot might have kept him on, on, the, on the left side. I'm not sure. It was awful close. The only possible way he was not off was if Olot was completely out of the play but down towards the end line. In that case, he would have been keeping him onside. But he came through completely unmarked, and FDU leads it 3-2. to two. And very little time remaining. If the goal should stand up, a tough way to lose. Coulthard was the goal scorer, number 11. Coulthard has been doing an excellent job in the defense all day long. Bobby and it makes one run through into the attack. He comes through unmarked and puts the ball in the net. And you just saw the dejection on Joe Donahue's face. Knocked across by King. And there's the horn. Ending the match, a 3-2 victory for Fairleigh Dickinson. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with a recap in just a minute. To Monmouth College, there you can see the final score. FDU wins it 3-2 on a late goal by Chris Colthard. And there he is right there with about two minutes to go. He came down the right side, Bobby, and knocked in the winner. But what a ball game. Yeah, it was a great ball game, Bobby. Uh, as we take a look at the team's final records so far, Monmouth at 7-5-0, and, and Fairleigh Dickinson comes up to 6-3-2. and two. A very well-played game. Both teams are really fighting as we take a look at Ben Stravato. A very happy Ben Stravato, and I'm sure a very dejected Joe Donahue, although he has nothing to be ashamed about. His team came out and performed really well today. They certainly did in our difficult choice today to name the MetLife players of the match. Offensively, we gave it to Brian Einskoff, even though he didn't score. He caused a lot of problems defensively and did a great job for FDU. And defensively, the defensive MetLife player of the game, Dave Pellin, the stopper for Monmouth College out of Freehold Township High School. Dave was stuck with the job of trying to defend the All-American, Mike King, All-American King with 82 goals, and he still only has 82 goals. Pellin did his job. He certainly did. Pellin, Pellin did a tremendous job all day long. King, a, a very dangerous player, and Pellin really his shadow throughout the entire day. Uh, King, King was uh, open at times in the first half, but in the second half he was shut down pretty well by Pellin. Okay, Bobby, let's take a look one more time at the game winner, the final goal. Okay, we see a goal kick by Zabilowicz. It's played through, and it's going to be slotted through here. Now there's a question as to whether he's offside or not, but he makes no mistake with it, sticks it into an open net. We see number 13, Bob Olet, uh, might have kept the player onside on his far left uh, defensive spot. Well, there goes Chris Colthard. Right there, the uh, young man who scored the winner. Our next game on TV 34, Sunday at 7 p.m., a big Class A South matchup between Jackson Township and Brick Township High School. We hope you'll join us there. To run down the scoring real quickly, scoring for FDU, it was Declan Daly and Chris Colthard, uh, along with Paul Duffy, goal scorers for Mammoth Nick Sacco and Rob Fogler. The final score, Fairleigh Dickinson University wins it 3-2 over the Monmouth College Hawks. A great afternoon of soccer. Hope you've enjoyed it. For Bob Hogan, I'm Bob Lampin, and so long, and thanks for being with us.
Weeknights, New Jersey Network runs the gamut from the sublime to the ridiculous. At 6.30, enjoy the classic television series, Dark Shadows, starring Jonathan Frid. 